This morning we're continuing our sermon series on living encounters with Jesus, and I want to welcome everybody who's watching online this morning as we talk today about abundant life, what it means to have abundant life. When Jesus came to begin his earthly ministry, he took the scroll from Isaiah down and he began to read it. And he said, I'm here for the weak, for the wounded, for the captives, for all the people who've been blind, for all the people who've struggled. I'm here. I'm here to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And as he began his ministry, he went through all kinds of situations and circumstances. And in that first year of ministry, he became very well known for a lot of things. Miracles and healings and people began to follow him. One day his disciples were taking him away from all the crowds and everything that was going on. And they took him across the Sea of Galilee. And by the time he got across, the people had found out where he was headed and came to be with him. They weren't close to any towns or close to any cities or close to any places for anything. They were just out in the middle of nowhere trying to find Jesus. And in that circumstance and in that situation, there were literally thousands of people listening to Jesus, listening to his words, listening to what he had to say. And in that great crowd of people, 5,000 plus, the day began to wane and the disciples began to see that the people were hungry. Jesus began to see that the people were hungry. And he did something unusual in this story in John chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. We find the story of Jesus and this crowd of people out in the middle of nowhere. Now, Jesus did something very unusual. He knew what the problem was. He knew what the situation was. And instead of taking care of the situation and just handling it because he's Jesus, he says to his disciples, what are we going to do about this problem? Now, you know, I'm no Einstein, but if I'm looking at a crowd of 5,000 people, imagine how many hamburgers we'd have to buy to feed 5,000 people, or how many burritos or whatever else. I mean, <laughs> the disciples were like, well, you know, we could scrape together some money and try to feed these people, but it would take a year's wages to feed all this crowd. There's no way we could feed all these people. And, you know, I think it's interesting as, as we walk through life that God just doesn't do everything for us. God doesn't just solve all our problems for us. And in this situation, Jesus wanted them to participate in solutions for the problem. And in your life, just because you begin to follow Jesus doesn't mean that God's going to all of a sudden solve all your problems. Did you know Christians have problems too? Did you know that sometimes we come up against things we don't have solutions for? Did you know that sometimes bad things happen to good people? All the time, actually. Every day that goes by, something bad is happening to a really good person. You say, that's not fair. If I'm going to serve God, he's got to take care of me or else. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> if, doesn't, doesn't, if God doesn't take better care of me, then I'm just not going to love him anymore. I'm just not going to serve him anymore. I'm just not going to do the things I should anymore. Have you ever come to a point of grief 
where you lost somebody you loved and it affected your faith? How could you do that to that person, God? How could you give them that terrible disease and make me watch them pass away in front of me? How could you do that to me? I don't want to make light of this because you and I are going to face things we don't understand. We're going to face things we don't have solutions for. We're going to go through circumstances where we don't have the strength within ourselves to do what we need to do. And that's where the disciples were with this situation. Jesus asked them to participate in the solution, and the only thing they could come up with was a financial one. Well, it's reasonable. And then somewhere in that crowd, out of all the people who were there, a little boy offered up what he had. And almost apologetically, the disciples came to Jesus and said, well, out of all of this crowd of people, we have found a young man who has a few loaves of bread and a few small fish. Basically, just enough to feed him. Not even considering the rest of the people that are here. And Jesus listened to the disciples as they spoke up. And he had everybody do something unusual again. See, this story is recorded in all four of the Gospels. And that's unusual because a lot of the stories about the miracles of Jesus, we hear one in this Gospel and one in another Gospel. But this story is in all four. And it's recorded in all four. Jesus had everybody sit down, and in the other three Gospels, he had them sit down in groups of 50 with heads of household. And they all sat down in all these groups, 5,000 plus people, all sitting down all around in these groups. Now let me tell you something significant about the year that Jesus started his ministry. You see, in the Old Testament... Every seven years, there was a cycle of rest and Sabbath and harvest. And at the end of 49 years, that 50th year was what they called the year of Jubilee. And in the year of Jubilee, everybody rested. And they lived off the harvest of the year before. And, that, and on that year of Jubilee, all the captives that people had, all the slaves people had were let go. You were required to let those slaves go. All the debts that you had were canceled. Can you imagine if we had a year of Jubilee here in America? And we knew if we could just make it to that 50th year, all our debts would be canceled. <laughs> all mortgages paid in full. All the land that the people had owned, that they had sold, was returned to them and to their families. It was a radical idea. <laughs> and unsurprisingly, wasn't followed very well throughout the history of the Jewish people and into the traditions of the time in which Jesus lived. But the year Jesus came and began his earthly ministry, according to all the scholars, and I've read all these different conflicting ideas about all the dates and all the different calendars and all the different things, that Jesus came and began his earthly ministry in the 50th year of Jubilee. Accounting all the different calendars and all the different things, Jesus began his earthly ministry in a very significant way year. The year when all debts were canceled, when all the things that you'd owed were gone. If you were a slave, you were free. And if you'd lost your ancestral family property, it was returned to you. 
Jesus is looking over that great crowd of people and sits them down by 50. Now, I don't think anything that happens in the Bible happens by accident. I believe that the word is there for us to delve into and see the underlying things that are going on. Jesus wasn't just there to take a few loaves and a few fish and turn them into food for 5,000 people. He was there so that the people could understand what it meant to live in the year of Jubilee. To live in the year of salvation, to live in the year of forgiveness, to live in the year of redemption, to live in the power and the strength and anointing of loving God who was putting himself out there for them so they could understand and truly understand what it meant to live an abundant life, what that could look like. They didn't have to work, they just had to sit down, they just had to rest in his provision. And as he gave thanks, he said, pass this around to everyone that's here. And as they passed it around through that great crowd, something miraculous began to happen. It began to multiply. And 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 as they were passing it around, there began to be some amazement on the disciples' faces, I'm sure, as they continued to pass it around and it continued to multiply and it continued to multiply until at the end, Jesus said, don't waste anything, gather up whatever's left. And there were 12 baskets full left after everyone had eaten as much as they could eat. Now that's abundant. And I want to live my life in that abundance today. I want to live my life in that provision today. And as you are here this morning or watching online or wherever you might be this morning, I want you to consider a few things with me about how we can apply this to our own lives. And the first thing is that Jesus is going to challenge your thinking. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to truly follow Jesus, he's going to challenge the way you think. He's going to ask you for the solutions. <laughs> you say, well, I, I haven't been talking to Jesus very much, and so, you know, I, I really don't need him for my solutions. I can come up with my own solutions. Well, how's that working for you? How are you doing in your life as you come up with all of your own solutions? Because Jesus challenges us to think about how we can provide and then shows us that we can't. Because our answers sometimes are just like the disciples. Money. America's answer for most problems is money. If I could just have some more money, I'd be good. Every time I walk into any convenience store in our community, there are flashing lights as I walk in that door of how much money you could win if you just spent a couple bucks. Lottery after lottery after lottery. I think there's six different lotteries now that you can buy into in almost every convenience store in our town. That's the world's solution. That's the world's answer. It's still money. You say, well, you got to have money. Money makes the world go around. Yes, I know that. <laughs> I'm not saying we shouldn't have money. And I'm not saying that Christians shouldn't be blessed. But what I'm saying is Jesus challenges our thinking on this. Challenges how we think about what the priorities are and what the importance is of the solutions to the problems that we're facing. You see, because in America, our problem is not an abundance of food. We have more food than we can eat. We throw away more food than any other country in the world. If you look behind the grocery stores in America, you can live out of the dumpsters. Ask me how I know, I'll tell you later. 
Our problem is a spiritual famine. We had the same problem that the disciples had. We throw money at the problem. And Jesus says, that's not the answer. The answer is in how I can help you to live an abundant life. As you live in a way that I can live through you and into you to transform you into the very best version of you. The very best version of me is not just found in the abundance of physical things or material things. The very best version of me is found in in how I live into the peace and love and grace and mercy and forgiveness of my Heavenly Father. I'm the best husband I can be when I'm living in God's peace. I'm the best father I can be when I'm living in God's grace. I'm the best pastor I can be when I'm living into the power of his anointing over my life. And all of that comes out of the abundant life that he wants for me as I live with him. God's not going to just answer our prayers with money. And then give God what you have and see what he can do with it. I mean, that little boy had nothing compared to what the need was. There was no way he could provide for 5,000 people. A similar story happened in the Old Testament with Elisha. Elisha had these groups of prophets, and there was, I think, 20 loaves of barley bread and a couple things there, and, and, and uh, there were two groups of 50 that were meeting, and uh, he said, how are we going to do this? And Elisha said, give it to them, and the Lord will provide. A very similar story. God had been providing for his people for thousands of years. It wasn't just in the immediate need when Jesus was there. He was providing for them way back before Jesus. And now, clear forward into the future, 2,000 years, God is still providing for us, still watching over us, still helping us to be what he wants us to be, still living in us and through us. You say, well, you don't know where I've been and what I've done and how I got here. No, I don't. But what value you put on yourself from your own opinion is nothing compared to a God who created you to be eternal and puts eternal value on you. Give him what you have because what you have is precious to him. The talents, the gifts, the abilities, the personality that he gave you, you got to understand, that's precious to him. He created you that way. Sometimes the things about your personality that are, that are really strong and, and you, you sometimes say to yourself, oh Lord, help me with that. Help me not to be such a talkative person. No. Just allow the words of your mouth to be the seasoning of love and grace into people's lives. Talk all you want. <laughs> I love it when I can just sit there and drive the car and somebody's just gabbing along at me when I'm driving. And I don't have to carry the conversation. And then I get in the car with some people and it's just dead quiet all the way. God's created us all differently. And when we give him what we have, he blesses us and helps us. And, it, and it's, it's wonderful when we take what we've been given and give it to him. It's so incredible how God lives through us and in us when we, when we just give him what we've got. And then my last thought is this. There, there are very few things in life that are sadder than the story that I heard from uh, an article I was reading about a very famous actor, and I won't say his name. But as he passed away, he was looking at a family member, a daughter that he'd been, in, that he'd been estranged with for years. Anybody here, don't raise your hand, have a family member watching online, have a family member you just haven't been able to get along with. Here was a father and a daughter who'd been estranged for years. And he looked up from his hospital bed, this famous actor with all of these awards and all of these abilities and all of these wonderful things about what he could do. And he looked at his daughter and his last words were, with a quaver in his voice, So much wasted time. (coughs) 
May God never, ever have to hear us say those words about our relationships, about the people that we love, about the people that we care about. Don't waste the gifts that God has given us. Make sure you gather those up, just like the disciples did afterwards, so that nothing's wasted. So that when you give God everything you've got to give, and you've done everything you know how to do, you've poured into the people around you and loved the people around you and been the best person you could be for them, that you won't have to look back on wasted time, wasted years. Because God wants to bring us abundant life. He wants to live in us and through us. He wants to help us and encourage us. So as Jesus challenges your thinking this week, be thinking of an area of your life where you have a need or a concern or a problem, a family member or a situation or a relationship that you don't have the ability to solve. And throwing money at it won't be the solution. Whatever that situation is, I want you to ask God to take what you have to give, your little loaves and fishes, <laughs> and I want you to give him everything you've got and then say, God, I need a miracle here. I need you to do something that only you can do. I'm giving you everything I've got. I'm laying it all out before you. Anything I can be, anything I can do, I want to be a part of this solution. And then be ready for that solution. And when that miracle happens, don't let anything get wasted. Make sure you pick up everything there is to pick up. Make sure you put everything you can into that situation, everything you can into that circumstance, because as that miracle continues, Jesus stands there at the throne of heaven making intercession for you. And this could be your year of jubilee. This could be your year of forgiveness and grace and redemption. This could be your time to say, God, you're in control and you're providing. You're watching over me. You're going to help me. You're going to be with me. And I'm going to be there waiting when that miracle of abundant life happens. So whatever that situation is, whatever that circumstance is, I believe that God wants to give you a year of jubilee where you don't even have to work for it. See, in the year of Jubilee, you didn't work for it. You just asked God to provide. This doesn't have to be something you push. It doesn't have to be something you create. It doesn't have to be something you make. It can just be you resting in God's provision and knowing he's going to see you through, whatever that situation, whatever that circumstance. So I'm going to be looking for some miracle stories in your life and in your situation as you pour your life out before God, as you let him be in charge of whatever the situation is, you don't try to come up with your own solutions. And you say, God, help me to live into your abundant life. Whether you're a teenager here this morning or you're pushing 100, everyone in between, God wants us to live in the abundance of the life he's created for us. And Jesus wants to be that provider, and the Holy Spirit wants to be the power that works within us. And so as you do that this week, I pray God's blessing over you, over your families, over your homes, for those watching online. And let's live into the abundant life that God has for us this week. Would you, would you stand with me as we close our service today? I want to just say a prayer for you and for your family, for your situation and your circumstance. And I don't know where you're at in your life. I don't know where your situation is, but Lester, if you'd come back, thank you. Whenever I call, I know that you'll hear. Heavenly Father, you see our hearts. You see our lives. You see everything about us. You know what's going on, Lord. And so we give it to you right now. And we ask for your help. We cannot do this by ourselves. Our own solutions, our own answers are not enough. So God, be with us and help us right now for every hand that was raised for every person kneeling here today for all the things going on in our lives God we ask that you would help us to give everything we are to you to live in your righteousness to live in your holiness to live 
as the people that you've called us to be, people that you can bless with the abundance that you want to give us. Lord, I ask that you would be with everyone watching online as well. That as we live in this week, as we live in this culture that throws money at everything, that we would live towards the answers that you can bring to us spiritually and create a strength in us spiritually that transcends anything physical. And Lord, for those things we don't understand, those things that happen to us that we don't understand and can't figure out, those people that we love that we watch fade away, Lord, I ask that you would just continue to give us the faith and the trust that you're watching over them and you love them more than we do. That you're helping them and you're watching over them in ways that we can't understand or even imagine. And that as we live for you and live to be the people you want us to be, your promise is that we will be reunited with them again someday. And that this life is only the beginning of an eternal journey with you as our Heavenly Father. You are a good, good Father. And we are loved by you. So be with us and help us, encourage us, and watch over us as we live into the abundant life that only you can provide. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each one of you. Have a great week.